I am the first person to open the no-man's chest. Sit back, relax and enjoy. Ah, listen up, you landlubbers. Let me take you back to a time when I was sailing the high seas with me crew of the Undying. But before we dive into this treacherous tale, allow me to introduce myself. I'm but a simple sailor, caught up in an adventure that'll send shivers down your spine. Now close your eyes and picture this. We're out there on the ocean, me and me hearty crew, searching for something that'd make even the most hardened sailor's heart skip a beat. But before we get to that part of the story, let me paint the scene for you. Twas a night like no other, the kind that sends fear into the hearts of even the bravest souls. A tempest descended upon us, wild and fierce, as if Poseidon himself were seeking vengeance. The waves, they roared like angry beasts, and our ship, the eternal voyager, creaked and groaned like an old man with bones to pick. We battled the storm with every ounce of strength in our souls, but that tempest had other plans for us. It grabbed our vessel and tossed us about like a plaything, spinning us this way and that until we were left battered, broken and disoriented. And then, when we thought our fate couldn't get any worse, we stumbled upon something that'd make Davy Jones himself quiver, the legendary Isle of Dead Man. Now I know what ye be thinking, but let me tell you, this place was no fairy tale. As we ventured further into the island's treacherous heart, every shadow seemed to whisper of danger and every rustle in the bushes set our hearts pounding like a drumbeat. We were explorers in a land where every step held peril, and our crewmates, well, let me describe them to ye. First there was old Bill, a grizzled veteran of the sea with a peg leg and an eye patch to match. His weathered face told a thousand tales, and he had a voice like thunder when he sang sea shanties that made the whole crew join in. Then we had young Timmy, the ship's lad, barely sixteen, but with a spirit as fiery as a dragon's breath. His mop of unruly hair and the twinkle in his eye were a constant reminder of the adventure that lay ahead. And let's not forget Black-Eyed Jenny, our fearless navigator, with raven-black hair and a glare that could make Neptune himself think twice. As we faced the dangers of the Isle of Dead Man, these faces would become etched in me memory, for better or worse. But little did I know, it was only the start of a perilous journey that would change the course of me fate, so, me hearties, batten down the hatches and hold tight to the rail, for this tale has just set sail, and we're heading into waters uncharted and dark as the abyss. Now I want you to understand, this here place was no fairy tale land. The air itself was thick with a sense of dread, and every rustle in the bushes felt like a whisper of danger. As we ventured deeper into the heart of the island, me crewmates started dropping like anchor stones. One by one they met their end, victims of the deadly challenges that lurked round every corner. And as the numbers dwindled, it became clear that only two of us were left standing. Myself, the captain, and me, loyal mate, standing by me side through thick and thin. But then, things took a turn toward the spine chilling. We heard a voice eerie as a ghost's whisper, slicing through the air. Only one can possess the treasure. The words hung there like a curse, a warning from beyond the veil of the living. It was like the island itself was speaking, trying to test the very core of our souls. And in that moment, I saw something change in me mate's eyes, a greed, a hunger that sent a chill down me spine. He lunged at me, his fingers clawing for the treasure I held in me grasp. Now me mate was no pushover. Bigger and stronger, he could have snapped me like a twig. But desperation fueled him, and desperation can make even the gentlest soul turn fierce. But I was quicker on me feet. A dancer with death, and I dodged his attack with a heavy heart. It was a fight for survival. A struggle that tore at me heartstrings, and in the end, I had no choice. With a heavy heart, I closed me fingers around his throat, and as his life slipped away, I couldn't help but think of the friendship that now lay broken at me feet. Then came the treasure, the one that had cost so many lives, including that of me closest friend. I pried it open with trembling hands, heart pounding like the ocean in a storm. But what lay inside, well, it was like nothing I could have ever prepared for. As me mate lay there, lifeless on the cursed ground, his spirit, freed from his earthly vessel, rose up like a wisp of smoke. Them eyes, once filled with camaraderie, now bore a look of betrayal and smouldering anger. It was a sight that sent a chill right through me soul. Me mate's spirit, his very essence, 
integrated with me own, like two souls locked in a dance with fate. The power, the curse, it all flowed through me, a torrent of emotions and darkness. There I stood on that godforsaken island, changed forever by the very thing I'd so desperately sought to possess. Now you might be thinking it's just some regular old curse, but let me tell you, this one was twisted like a dagger to the gut. It had a clause, a catch that would make the bravest sailor quiver. It said Hendry would be stuck, bound to the spirits of the dead, unless he did the unthinkable, reaping the souls of a hundred thousand sailors. Aye, you heard me right. A hundred thousand souls. Imagine the weight of that curse, the darkness it had cast upon a man's soul. Hendry, once a fearless captain, was now reduced to a rotting, undead wretch. That artifact, the necromancer's wand, it became his sidekick in this unholy mess. With it, he could command those poor, lost souls that roamed the ocean's depths. His mission, grim as the darkest storm, was to hunt down sailors, snatching their lives to break that cursed chain. It was a tale of desperation and despair, of a man cursed and changed by the very thing he'd sought to claim. So there he was, Hendry van Dyke, a man cursed and crazed, commanding the very spirits he once sailed beside. Aye, he became a terror of the seas, a ghostly apparition haunting both the living and the dead. With that cursed wand in hand he'd summon his crew, not the laughing, joking bunch they once were, but soulless phantoms under his wicked command. The ship, once a symbol of adventure and camaraderie, turned into a cursed vessel, an omen of doom sailing through the roughest waters like a spectre of death. Old Hendry, he lost all sense of humanity, his heart as cold as the depths he now roamed. Relentless and unfeeling, he scoured the seas for victims, his former crew among them, with no hint of mercy in his heart. The very ocean that used to hold beauty and wonder was now a witness to the horror he unleashed, a canvas for his reign of terror. Every ship that crossed his path, every sailor who dared to venture into his domain, they all trembled at the mention of his name, a name that had become synonymous with fear. So, there you have it, the tragic tale of Hendry van Dyke, the once daring captain who traded his humanity for power and ended up paying a price so steep it had sent shivers down even the bravest sailor's spine. And let me leave you with a word of caution, mate. The next time you're out at sea and catch a faint whisper in the wind, pray it's not old Hendry van Dyke and his cursed wand, for he'll be out there, forever hunting for souls to save his wretched undead existence.